ladies and gentlemen, Doombots of all ages, we have the legendary Shuri. I know. It's time. Legendary Spotlight. Shuri, Princess of Wakanda. Okay, so Shuri, much like IW, incredibly awesome character. Slight difference. Shuri doesn't have the impact the day you get her early that IW does. While she can be used in a lot of different game modes in the same kind of way, war, arena, dark dimension, two, three, uh, raids, uh, PvP. Yeah, she's a legendary character. They should be good there, right? Uh, one of the downsides to her is she really needs a lot of investment for you to start feeling the strength of her, and you just probably don't have that in the early game. That said, the earlier you get her, the better you can do with some of the other content, like off the top of my head, Chaos Theory. Uh, you can't really can't do the five-star event until you have her at five-star, and it also doesn't really cost you anything to get her at five-star, and we'll talk about that in now. Yeah, it takes five five-star Spider-Verse characters. So, obviously the best Spider-Verse characters right now. You got Symbiote Spider-Man, you got Carnage, you got Venom, Miles Incredibly Early Farm in the Blitz store, uh, Spider-Man, I think they give him to you for free, and then you just accidentally get more stars on him as you play the game. You're like, oh, I guess I didn't have a seven-star Spider-Man already. Um, but then you take a moment and be like, but wait, I can also use Doc Ock. I can also use all of the Sinister Six. Isn't it the same team that I can use to unlock IW? Yes, it is. Therefore, working on one team in the Sinister Six unlocks two legendaries for you. And what those legendaries do for you, that's completely up to you where you are in the game and how you plan on building out your roster. So you do have a lot more options with Shuri. Obviously, look, it's ridiculous. It's 13 characters. So if you just happen to be short on like a Shocker or a Green Goblin, but you look and you go, hey, I noticed my Spider-Man's five-star. That's one less character you have to worry about. These challenge missions, these five-star legendary unlocks, you rarely need a team higher than like 80k to beat. And uh, you can attempt it multiple times. You don't have to three-star it. So you have plenty of options going into this. So she's a very easy to unlock legendary character, which is great because of when she becomes relevant to your roster. And let's take a quick look at that on her kit. So, here's Shuri, right? You've unlocked her, you got her at five star, the rest of your Wakandans are useless because you're not working on them because the Wakandans are in fact useless. They're actually the most useless, I would argue. Uh, but they do have to be leveled up for something or another. Let's not talk about Shuri on the Wakandans, right? We know you that's a team, they have a tag, you can use them together, that's great. Let's talk about what Shuri does outside her usability. So, start with War, right? Uh, on War, if you're using the Wakandans, absolutely phenomenal. If you are using the Mercenaries with Killmonger, you could put her on that team to give them a little bit of extra sustain. Totally reasonable and get a lot of extra damage out of Killmonger uh, with charges and defense ups, etc., etc. Uh, you can also just use her on offense with any team that you need a healer on. Uh, you could put her next to an Ultron. Nah, that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Don't put her next to Ultron. She might give him energy. He might all unturn one on auto. Bad looks. As long as you're in control of it, that should be okay. You just don't want Ultron doing anything but summoning minions first. Forget I even said it. Uh, basically, in war, both sides of the war, people have to look twice when Ashuri is present. She is incredibly sustainable. Raids, uh, I have a, a theory, working theory, uh based on whether Shuri or Minerva is the better raid healer. Uh, and the theory is, if you are stronger, but like damage-wise, then the content you're doing, Minerva is better because you'll be getting a lot of passive heals from killing off dudes. Uh, if you are weaker than the content you're doing, uh, Shuri is better because she gives your team sustain with a very large heal at the end of it and some passive heals and deflex help you keep your team live enough enough to do it and if you're fighting stuff that's super hard for you use both use shuri and minerva together and then the other three characters will be like hello black bolt yo-yo or symbiote spider-man carnage 
Venom, whomever you need to push through the highest ends of raids, if that's what you're working on. Uh, Dark Dimension, uh, Dark Dimension 2, yeah, she's absolutely great in Dark Dimension 2. She's a good healer, she has defense up, she has an energy battery, she has heal blocks. Downside, uh, she's another tech character. So tech characters are really hard to work on in multiples, as you know probably now by working on all the bio characters. Can be rough. Uh, Dark Dimension 3, kind of the same conversation. There are a huge amount of tech characters that you might want to bring into Dark Dimension 3. Off the top of my head, Minerva is one of them. Uh, you know, you might not have the option to, but I wouldn't regret bringing her in. I brought her into Dark Dimension 3 and she was absolutely great for me when she stayed alive, but that's true of every character I had in Dark Dimension 3 on Global Nodes, so whatever. Great. Endgame raids, great. War, great. PvP, and she's she gives defense up and heals in PvP. Uh, great. That's it. Like, what else? Arena? You can use her anywhere. Um, what I was saying before, the downside to her, and you're going to see it as we get into her kit, she doesn't have great stats. She has low health, uh, her damage is high, but she doesn't actually attack ever. Uh, her armor is medium, her focus is medium. This is kind of everything that's important. She has relatively low health, even for a 7 star 4 red. And since you kind of need that health for her, she loses a little bit out. And at 5 star with like 1 or 2 red... She has even lower. So let's take a quick look at her kit. Talk about the tier 4s. Wakanda forever. Uh, don't even buy it. Just don't. On spawn, apply speed up to self and all Wakandan allies. Because it's always on herself. This is an upgrade that you want specifically for Wakandans. And since the Wakandans suck, don't waste your time on it. Uh, the only thing to note is on defense up, generate ability energy for self. This is always present, so it doesn't matter when you buy it. Uh, you can get a little bit of extra value uh, for max health in raids, but that's specifically only raids. Uh, in raids, when self or any ally drops below 50% max health, that 3 deflect can be the difference of keeping them alive long enough to sustain them, whether it be with her or, you know, if it's a symbiote, they'll heal themselves up. You know how it works. So... Pretty reasonable. Uh, one of the downsides of a lot of her kit you'll see is a lot of it says with Wakandans, but the Wakandans suck. So, moving to Kamoyo healing. Uh, heal the most injured ally for 500 health, which is nothing, plus 15% of this character's max health. Now, that's 500 health with the tier 4. It was 250 plus 15%. Uh, and it was only repeat three times. So, you really want this. Because you want that to happen a total of five times. That is five unique heals of the lowest character. That is a huge deal. If she had higher health pool, it would be absolutely obliterating. Like If you had high red stars on her, that heal could take a character from bleeding to immediately alive and top off somebody else. Like It is a big heal. Uh, as a result of it, she can't use it for like the first couple of turns in the game. Uh, she starts with zero, gives herself an energy on turn one to go to two, so it usually can't be done for about three turns. Which is kind of reasonable, considering that you don't really need to use it that often. It's kind of your, oh no, I need to heal button. But it is a big heal, and totally worth the tier four investment. Uh, later, not necessarily earlier, when, eh, maybe earlier. Maybe that extra heal is enough to make her better. Uh, instant upgrade. Do not tier 4 this. Do not tier 4 this. Let's talk about why. Apply defense up to self and all allies for two turns. Apply plus one charge up to a maximum to self and all Wakandan allies. Generate two ability energy for random allies. So, see where it says generate ability energy for one random Wakanda ally? I will tell you right now, 100%, she is not a Wakanda ally. She doesn't see herself. People say, well, I see her get energy all the time, and I tier for it. Yes, because... Da -da -da -da, apply defense up to self and all allies. On defense up, generate ability energy for self. That is what that energy is. This is useless. This is useless on the Wakandans. If this is useless on the Wakandans, why would you use it off the Wakandans? If she gave herself another energy, no question, absolutely. This is a completely useless ability. Don't even bother with it. 
uh, tier fouring it. As, outside of it, this ability is amazing, and you want to use it pretty much on cooldown. Uh, and then Vibranium Gauntlets. Like I said, she has a high damage stat, but like, she doesn't actually do damage. She does AoE damage 200% with tier 4s. The second turn of heal block might be worthwhile for very specific things, but ultimately, probably not. I haven't noticed needing it, so reasonable without it. Her tier 4s are kind of just Kamoyo healing. Um, you can make an argument for Wakanda Forever based on just the sheer line of text that you get from all of this stuff. I wouldn't. Kamoyo healing is pretty much the only uh, mandatory one to make sure she's working right. So we've talked about her tier 4s, talked about where she's useful. Let's give her a rating. Now, like I said, she's tied for either the best uh, raid healer based on where you are or, you know, second best. But there's really no one else that comes up. Uh, there are teams, right? Like, well, the Spider-Verse or the Symbiote Spider-Verse team, they, uh, they don't, they're the best healers because they heal themselves, right? Reasonable. Um, sometimes people will say, like, the Scientist Supreme is, like, the best healer because she buff flips. Yeah, but her heals are bad. When you're talking about pure, unadulterated sustain, her and Minerva are right next to each other. And using them both is going to guarantee that whoever the other three characters are should probably stay alive. So, between her defense ups, Minerva's heals, and reses, you're in a really good spot. Uh, I think she's one of the best healers, if not the best healer in the game. I think the day you get her, you're not going to get a lot of impact out of her. You might see some value in Arena. You might see some value in, you know, raids, maybe. Uh, hopefully you have a character like a Minerva or a team that has its own self-sustain at this point, that she's just kind of a hat on a hat. Uh, once you get to U7, you will start using her more, whether you be using some one of those older teams like Tech Wing or uh, Ultron's Angels, or whether you be moving to a different version of a team as you progress further and further with like Black Bolt or Hela and Thor, you're gonna use her. From the day you get Shuri until the last day right now, until something huge changes, you're gonna always find a use for Shuri. Because of that, and because she is so, so much more reliable to get than a character like Minerva, or some of the other self-sustaining characters. S tier. S tier character. Like, she she really is. Um, I don't know certain game modes that I'd have a hard... That, like, I wouldn't have a hard time with if I didn't have her. I don't know if I could have gotten to certain points of the game um, without having access to Shuri. Again, early on, not as impactful. Uh, late game... I don't think you'd find anyone doing the hardest version of this game that's willing to say, nah, Shuri's useless, don't even bother with her. She is easily one of the best uh, healers in the game. Um, all in all, a great investment. And don't forget, you need her to get a meaningful amount of promotion credits and red stars from the Chaos Theory Wakandan event. So if you ever intend on pushing them past five, six, and seven. Not only do you need her, but you need her worked up. I promise you, you won't regret any investment you put in her. Um, whether it be you got her in three months of play, you know, because you you missed IW, but she was the next one in the rotation. Whatever that happens to be, I promise you, you will never regret it. So do me a favor now. Make a fool out of me in comments. Tell me how you think Shuri is overrated. Tell me how you think that there are better things to do with your time than unlocking Shuri, because I really want to know what people who don't like Shuri are have to say, so I could avoid them when giving advice to people who want to succeed. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.